Immersed Robot. Hello everyone, welcome to Immersed Robot. So this is just a quick video talking about Hitman 3 really. I was going to make a proper video on this when I first got the game. But it turns out after I played it for around sort of 20, 30 minutes, I got the gist of what it was all about. And I just didn't want to put in the effort of making a proper video on it and doing a performance test. That was one of the things I wanted to do as well. But um, after playing it, I decided not to do that and actually refunded it on Steam. And I had read a few things before this anyway from some of the community that had already picked up the game and had a chance to dive in and uh, test it out really and share their thoughts on it before I even got in there. So yeah, Hitman 3, the VR version is just not great at all. Now, Hitman is a game which I really enjoy, and I've played Hitman 1 the of the rebooted series from 2016. I played Hitman 1, and I got Hitman 2. I think I must have got it free on PlayStation Plus because it's in my account, but I didn't buy it. So I've played a few levels on that as well, and I am quite a big fan of the Hitman games. I like what they offer. I like the stealth mechanics and uh, just the freedom to attack the levels however you choose to do so. So I was really looking forward to the VR implementation of Hitman 3 and also the opportunity to go back and play Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 as well those levels those same levels within VR but within just a few minutes you can tell that the VR implementation is very lackluster in this and you can also tell like No Man's Sky actually that the PC VR port is actually very closely related to the PSVR version in the sense that it's really designed to be played seated forward facing with no room scale at all you it really doesn't even want you to turn in real life or anything like that you really have to use like a the thumbsticks to turn um you can do it it's not impossible and there's certain options to help do that but it's just it doesn't feel natural nothing feels natural in the vr implementation and it was instantly disappointing. The first time I went in there, I could tell that things weren't right. I played it on the Valve Index and um, the hand position, instantly the hand position is wrong. And this is something else that we've seen from Sniper Elite VR that came out. And it was just like the, the hand positions are wrong. I don't know how this isn't like solved before release. It's so blatant that the hand positions is wrong. And in that game, it was actually wrong on both the Oculus Touch controllers and on when I tried it on the Valve Index as well. Now look, I understand that it's very difficult to develop games in VR. You know, I can't even begin to imagine all of the things that you have to check and, and all of the, the processes that you have to go to to get everything working correctly and all the mechanics working correctly. And in fact, Denny Unger from Cloudhead Games posted something on Twitter with reference to Hitman 3 saying that VR development is hard and some of the assumptions you might make as a flat screen, flat game developer don't necessarily translate to VR mechanics and I think it's just learning from the past mistakes that people have made and bringing them forward and uh, applying them to your game. The issues around this really are, I guess, playtesting and not getting the right people involved who know or have a history of VR ports or creating VR games. You know, if, if the developers of Hitman 3, IO Interactive, had just asked some of the more indie VR developers, even the, the most basic, low, you know, budget indie game probably has better VR implementation than this AAA Hitman 3 game, in all honesty, in some ways at least. So some of the other problems with this, the, the graphics are blurry and you can increase the resolution scaling in the launcher before you go into the game. But when I tried to do this, it didn't really make a lot of difference and I don't know if I was doing something wrong. But yeah, the graphics are not great. They look very blurry in the headset and you can increase Steam VR resolution scaling and all these other things. It doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. And part of it seems to be the anti-aliasing that they've applied to the game as well. And you can't sort of change the type of anti-aliasing that's used or turn anti-aliasing off as far as I can see anyway. So that was a big deal for me as well. So you've got hand position, the blurry graphics, but just the general jank of it, it just feels really, really poor. There's no room scale, so as I mentioned, because they seem to be taking the focus from uh, PSVR and just translating it over to PC VR, 
you really need to be seated and the inverse kinematics of the character that you're playing uh, just feel completely wrong if you're standing up in a room and, and even attempting to use any kind of room scale or turning on the spot or anything like that you'll find very quickly that your head will be out of position of the body of the character that you're playing and you know all these things they just contribute i could go on and on but there's already you know a million reviews about hitman 3 and all the problems it has so i just wanted to make a video about my own disappointment on it because i was really looking forward to this and this reminds me in some ways when no man's sky first came to vr but that was a game that really um, you know no man's sky is probably one of my favorite games of all time so i stuck with that and i persevered with it but it, it suffered from some of the same mistakes but it wasn't as bad as this i don't think anyway um, but it suffered from the same mistakes in the sense that it was seemed to be really focused on the PlayStation VR version and the PC VR version was a port of that in the sense that again you had to face forward really the hood was always facing in one direction so you had to follow that and just turn on the spot with the thumbsticks and these are just things that it's just a frustration when you're used to playing even sort of moderate room scale kind of games or at least have the ability to turn and have the hood follow you and in another way hitman 3 reminded me of another game which i was really looking forward to back from 2017 fallout 4 vr that launched in a really poor way uh, there were so many things wrong with it in terms of how the game was being rendered in vr and um, you know the people forget but when that game first launched the resolution in headset was actually tied to the desktop resolution of the pc that you were playing on so <laughs> it was just a weird thing that they had and you had to go in and change some of these ini files and change some of the parameters in there in order to get it to run correctly look correct in vr and all of these other things that just seem to be completely overlooked and actually to this day fallout 4 vr is ideally played with you know plenty of mods that have been created from the community and you know it's a great game anyway now in vr but it still suffers from some of these problems of a game a flat game ported to vr and not having some of the extra work done. Now I can forgive Fallout 4 and I can forgive Hitman 3 for certain things. You know, not everything needs to be done on motion controllers. Button presses are okay here and there for a flat game ported to VR. It's not ideal, but I can understand why developers do that. But some of the other things are really difficult to get past and they just make the VR experience more frustrating than fun, honestly. So Hitman 3 is just not a great game in VR at the moment this moment in time but i'll check back on it and hopefully it will get some updates the developers will be receptive to some of the feedback and be able to make some of these changes some things are so easy to correct the hand position of the controllers it's so easy to correct if they know that they're working with certain controllers they can detect the controllers that the motion controllers that are being used they can just alter the hand position based on that it's really not that that difficult to do um and this is talking from a, a an armchair developer i, I guess because i don't develop games but you know you know what i'm saying everybody can understand that that is actually not that difficult a thing to implement and to get right and yet it was missed it was missed in sniper elite vr as well so anyway i just wanted to um, make a quick video about my disappointment and it, I, i'm sorry to be negative on it but um yeah I, I i am just really disappointed by it because it was one of the ones i was looking forward to and uh game which is you know it's a rare occurrence now a triple a pc vr game so um hopefully they can put in the extra work from the feedback and just get it in a a little bit more of a playable form anyway that would be great so that's all i wanted to say um yeah a little bit negative sorry about that but um <laughs> thanks for watching anyway and i'll see you next time